In this video, I'm going to show you how to take this image and make it look like this one with the brightness and contrast adjustment layer dodging and burning on that layer mask and some minor spot retouching. So this is a follow along practice video. I've included the link in the description below for you to download for free the image or images that I'm using. Yes! If you like this video, make sure you whack it, smack it, and crack a lack it. So as I look at this image, it appears a bit flat and dull to me, maybe a tiny bit dark. Remember, you can always go up to window and toggle on the histogram. Okay, it's it's not a bad histogram, but there are no real whites or light tones, right? We can see that they're missing right over here. So that's good to know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a non-destructive brightness and contrast adjustment layer because that's pretty much the easiest way to fix this. But before I do that, there's some things that I don't like. like I find this elevator thing distracting. I find that fireman safety lock distracting. I find this little bit right here of color distracting. I like the grunge on the elevator doors, but I don't like these little white dots and scratches. This little string is very visually distracting as well as the string down here. So I think I'm gonna retouch that out real quick. And instead of doing it on my background layer, I can either hit Command or Control J to duplicate it, or I can just hit this plus inside of a square, which will add a blank new layer. And you can tell because it's transparent, right? You see the white and gray checkerboard. Transparent layers are indicated by this white and gray checkerboard pattern all throughout Photoshop. That's an indication of a transparency inside Photoshop. And let's go ahead and just grab the spot retouching tool, which is this one right here. If you don't see yours, just click and drill down until you see it and then select it. Remember your left and right bracket keys to make your brush bigger or smaller. And you just want your brush to be a little bigger than what you're retouching. And you just click and it automatically gets rid of it. Now this one, I'm on right bracket key. Remember over by the letter P and I'm on paint over it. And Photoshop's gonna look around and figure it out. It's gonna look around and figure it out. Now I'm gonna hold down the command and space bar to zoom in, left bracket key for a smaller brush. Maybe you just want your brush to be a little bit bigger than what you're retouching. Cause I, I wanna remove the things that are distracting. I can hold the space bar key to pan around. There's a little string I don't like. I don't like that. And make my brush a little bigger with the right bracket key. So I can just do some quick clicks and paints. Get a couple at once there with that one. Anything that is visually distracting. Now you have to be careful not to go crazy. Again, I'm a little bit zoomed in. Notice my magnification's at 200%. Really, you don't have to go above 100, but sometimes if you go up a little larger, it does make it kind of quicker and easier to see the problems. Okay, I think I fixed all the major retouching issues, the things that were bothering me. I'll hit Command or Control Zero to go back to full screen, maybe because I'm have a problem. I'll get rid of that little dot right there. Now let's toggle off our layer that we just made all the retouches on. Toggle them on and off. You see how visually busy it was before? I mean, our eye was ignoring it, but notice how much more crisp and clean it looks. I don't see those little lines in the outfit. I still have the grunge of the atmosphere, but not all the distracting elements. Now you can click over here on the layer one. If you double click that name, it automatically selects itself and you can just type retouch enter. That way, if you get 10 layers or 100 layers, you'll remember which layer has your retouching on it. Now, the reason we put this on as new layers is because I still haven't permanently altered this background layer, which is great. I feel like it's a little lifeless. So let's add a brightness and contrast adjustment layer. And I just think it needs to be a little brighter. We're in that little gray area because the brightness and contrast adjustment is a universal adjustment. It's applying the same settings to the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows, and everything in between. So for me, I think she looks good. The doors look good here at this brightness setting. But I find that I'm blowing out the lighter wall around it. And now that lighter wall, I'm finding kind of distracting. That's why we have these layer masks. And this layer, the brightness and contrast layer, is the one selected because you can see the lighter gray. But the thing that's most selected is the layer mask. See the white corners? Because if I click over here, now the adjustment is most selected. But I click here, the layer mask is most selected. And what I'm gonna do is paint on that layer mask. I'm gonna hit B for the brush. I'll hit D for default colors, just to get my black and white over here going. And if I don't have black in the foreground, I need black to paint on this white mask. So I'll just click these double arrows or hit the X key. I'll take a quick look at my options bar. 
and I'll see them at a normal blend mode 100%, which is where I want to start off. I'll tap the right bracket key a little, and I'll just paint. All right, see, I'm bringing back too much of the original. Command Z, because remember, toggle that on and off. Look how dull and flat and dark that looks. So I definitely like the vibrance and the brightness of her, but I can't paint back at 100% of its original tone. So what I'll do is I'll just drag this down to maybe 40%. A scrubby slider is when you hover over a word and your cursor changes to a left or right pointing arrow and you just drag it back and forth to vary the opacity. It's like bring back 40% of that original darkness. I feel like that's not bad. It gives me texture in the wall. You can hit Commander or Control minus to zoom out a touch. That way I can just, with a big soft brush, I can pass across the top once. Now if I pass again, it's gonna do another 40%. So if I wanted something on the very edge right here, I could do that. So toggle off what I did. Flat, Command-0 to fit in screen. I'll toggle that eyeball back on. A lot more interest in, in dynamic coloring. Remember, an adjustment layer will affect every single layer below it. And there's some tricks to get around that, which you're going to learn in this series. But just know that whether I have 100 layers, 1,000 layers, or just these two layers, the brightness and contrast is affecting all the stuff on this retouching layer and everything on the background layer, which is perfect. That's exactly what I want. So that's how you edit a mask. And if you want to see your mask specifically, just hold down the Alt or Option key and click on it, and you'll see your mask in the display window. Remember, with mask, white reveals, black conceals, and then any shade of gray partially reveals and conceals. Click the eyeball icon to bring it back to regular view. Save this as a PSD working file if you want to continue editing it. And I've got to say that while we're here, there does seem to be a problem with the converging lines. Let's take this one step further. If you hit Command, Option, Shift, Letter E, or Control, Alt, Shift, Letter E, it's going to compress every single layer to the very, very top layer. So once you've compressed everything to the very top layer, go up to Filter and down to Camera Raw Filter, which is going to load the Adobe Camera Raw dialog box. And we're going to have a ton of videos about Adobe Camera Raw. It's incredibly powerful. It's where I spend most of my editing if I'm not in Photoshop. I'm gonna to toggle the basic panel close by clicking this arrow. And I'm gonna go down to geometry. You have some automated tools here. I'm just gonna say, I want all my vertical lines to be vertical. So I'm gonna click that and it will automatically straighten up my vertical lines. Let's see what the automatic did. Automatic's not bad either. So here's none, right? You see how the lines converge a little bit at the bottom? Very minor. I think that looks better though. I like that. So I'm gonna click okay. So I can toggle this off. That's before, this is after before, after. So sometimes it's okay that it's not perfect and straight. Sometimes converging lines are nice. I think I like this better though. Hope that helped. If you like this video, make sure you whack it, smack it, and crack a lack it. Yes! Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Actually, all kidding aside, I hope this video helped. And if it did, consider subscribing. I like subscribers. That's awesome. What? You just took one in the jugular, man. <laughs> Whoa. Yes! <laughs> oh. oh my god, I did. This is Hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here.